اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. You find an old lady. She takes all her life savings to go and purchase a ticket so that she can go for Hajj. She pays all of her life savings to a person, to an office, so that she can perform Hajj. The time comes for her to go to the airport for the details of going towards Hajj. And they tell, tell her, you don't have a visa. The office that took her money was selling Hajj visas, fake Hajj visas. Visas that were not valid. On the other hand, you have a person, he dies and leaves behind sons. And one son fights over the other to get the most share of his property. On the other hand, you have people who have nice, decent jobs. They're always looking for better jobs. You have people that have better jobs looking for the best jobs. And this vicious circle of wanting more in this dunya is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala precisely talks about in Juz Amma, in the verses. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم Prophet وسلم, he was sitting with the Sahaba and he said, Which one of you can read 1,000 verses every night? The Sahaba, radiallahu an, despite their high level of iman and so much worship they used to do, they said, ذلك, ya Allah? Who is capable of reading 1,000 verses a night? And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَقْرَأُوا إِنْ شِئْتُمْ Read if you wish. أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ فَإِنَّهَا تَعْدِلُوا أَلْفَ آيَا The meanings of this verse, this, these, these five or six verses that we recited, they are equal to 1,000 verses. In another narration, Sahih narration, you find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was sitting with the Sahaba, and he recited, Alhaakum al takathur, hatta zurtum al maqabir, maqabir, until the end. And he said, Whosoever reads this, Laqi Allah, wa huwa dahikun fi wajhi. He is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while Allah is going to be smiling on that person's face. Simple surah, but what's the message? Let's look into it. Alhaaku, Alhaakum al takathur. Alha basically is from the word lahu. Lahu means to get diverted, distracted. If you find a person working in a company and he's on Facebook, on chat, or on Twitter, and not doing his, his work, this particular person is involved in the act of lahu. During the Juma khutbah, if you are on your cell phones, chatting, Facebooking, then you are involved in the act of lahu. Why? Because you... Me being here, your purpose is to listen to the khatib. Now, if you do anything contrary to your purpose, then it becomes an act of lahu. Similarly, this dunya and its mere existence shall not distract us from our main purpose, which is 
وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah has not created us except to worship Him. So alhaakum, Allah is saying, you are busy and distracted and diverted. And then He says, at-takathur. The want for more, the desire for more, the rat race. I want this. Today I have 5,000 riyals. Tomorrow I want 7. Tomorrow I want 10. 10 to 12, 15, 25. The rat race. I have a Toyota Parado. The guy has a Land Cruiser. I need to upgrade. Rat race. I have iPhone 5. He got 5S. He's got 6. 6. Rat race. Constant desire. To look at somebody else and their thing, what they have better, and work towards that. And in that process, forgetting your main purpose. Forgetting our main purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Notice interestingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did not say, what has distracted you? He is referring to the act of wanting more. So it couldn't be wanting more of children, more wives, more money more jobs, whatever. Anything that gives us and turns us into this mode of constant competition for worldly gains. That act of competition is what's being talked about. Here. So for a poor person, that act and his competition is going to differ from somebody who drives a Rolls Royce. They're going to be different levels. But it's not that level we're talking about, it's the act of competition that distracts us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Until how long are you going to be distracted? Until you'll come to the grave. That's it. 60, 70, 80, 100, 100 years? After 100 years, you're going to come in the graves. Now notice how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, so when we're reading this particular verse, we're all alive, we're not in the grave. But why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the word zurtum and not tazuru? Zurtum means in the past, until you visited the graves. Tazuru means you shall visit your graves in the future. So from the context of the verse is we're busy in something not good. And Allah is saying, eventually you'll visit the graves in the future. But over here it says, in the past. The meaning is that the matter, the, the fact that you're going to visit gra your grave, this particular fact is such a true fact that as if in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's past. Hatta zurtumul maqabir, until we visit our graves. Now, Many times we go to the graves. Somebody dies, a relative, and when we visit and we come out, we're shaken for a bit. But this visit is going to be our permanent visit. So when we leave this earth and we eventually go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the graves. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking over there? He's saying, Hatta azurtumul maqabir. Kalla sawfa ta'lamun. Kalla basically over here means like it's a warning sign. Stop, warning sign. Indeed, verily, for sure, you're going to find, find out. Sata'lamun. Kalla sawfa ta'lamun. It will be a very short period and you'll find out what's going to happen to us in the grave. The word sawfa is referring to the closeness of the coming of this grave. Which only tells us that in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in reference to the eternity that Allah is going to give us in Jannah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. In reference to this Jannah and the eternal life, this life is nothing. It's as if you blinked your eye. And those of you that are good in math, you already know that anything, no matter how big it is, no matter how big the number is, Divided by infinity gives you zero. Even the mathematical equations, we have figured this out today. Anything, no matter how long your life is, when you divide it by infinity, i.e. unlimited, it turns to zero. The value of this life is zero. If Allah 
valued this dunya an equal of a wing of a fly none of the disbelievers would even had had a drink of water from this world meaning of a hadith so Allah says kalla sawfa ta'lamun so it's very short that you will we will all end up in our graves then look at the next part thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamun then you will also again find out. What are we going to find out? What's going to happen to us in the grave? So this particular life of yours is going to end very soon. You'll find out what's going to happen. But once we enter the graves, we're also going to find out what's going to happen. Another life is going to begin for us. Alamul barzakh. Some other mufassiruns, they have said, Kalla sawfa ta'lamun, the first one, refers to you entering the grave and finding out the punishment or the reward. And you stay there. Then you will be resurrected on the day of judgment. And we'll find out what is going to happen to us. Then Allah says, it's like as if a hasra. Only if you had known with certain knowledge what was going to happen to you? Only if we had the certainty that what is going to happen, the certainty that Jannah exists, the certainty that this dunya is going to vanish, the certainty that our life is limited, the certainty that the money is given to us is temporary, the certainty that our breaths are limited, the certainty that our thinking ability is controlled by Allah. The certainty that our heartbeat is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can stop our hearts whenever He wants. Only if we had this certainty. Had only if you had known with ilm, and not only just any ilm, with yaqeen, certainty in that ilm. Now in order to understand certainty, we need to understand sometimes the opposite, which is doubt. Now, doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in the Quran. This book, Quran, has no doubts in it. Now, I did an experiment to understand what doubt is. So I created once in my house, I made milkshake for my family. And after my mom and my sister, they had had milkshake, the only sentence I said, is how amazing is milkshakes with raw eggs. And obviously you know that women, they don't like to eat raw eggs, even sometimes men. But again, I just said this particular sentence. I never said I put raw eggs in it or there is going to be raw eggs in it. And the response was that my sister, she vomited. Just by that doubt that was created in her head that this milkshake had egg in it. And right before this doubt, she was in a state of certainty. So certainty is something that can impact your physiological state. We have an example of a Sahabi. He said, Wallahi la ajidu riha jannah min wara'i Uhud. I can smell Jannah behind Uhud. He reached a level of certainty. And all the ahadiths that talk about Jannah, that he could physiologically smell Jannah in this dunya. So when our Iman and Yaqeen reaches that level, it starts playing with our physical state. Then you do not need an alarm to get up. You do not need a wake-up call to get up. Because you've reached that level of certainty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that level of Yaqeen in this dunya and in akhirah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمُ Eventually, when you come out of your grave, you're going to see Jahannam. La tarawunna al jahim. Over here, la tarawunna al jahim. Three emphasis. Surely, indeed, you're going to look at the hellfire. Now, the word over here, jahim, is used, not Jahannam. Jahim is basically, so in the Arabic language, for the word lion, you have more than 500 words that describe a lion. And it's every state. So 
Jahim refers to a state of a lion that is sitting in ambush with red eyes looking at its prey waiting to attack it. So Allah is referring to Jahannam as this predatory animal that awaits of peop for people who are distracted from their true purpose in this dunya. And it's waiting. Another word, we, you know, inna jahannam akana mirsada. Jahannam is waiting in ambush. For who? For people who are distracted from their true purposes in life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand the true purpose of this dunya and to walk on it. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينِ When we will come to that stage that we're going to look at this Jahannam looking at us, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws us an imagery. And those, especially the children, they can relate to this. Sometimes you have cartoons that play. And in that particular cartoon, you know, if it's a rabbit or something, it's running and then it automatically it sees a predator. And you see the eyes of that cartoon go like tick, 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 tick. They, they become increasing in the, in the cartoon. They show that as if astonishment, I'm amazed, oh my God, what's this? That's the imagery that Allah is trying to draw here. The first time Allah says, indeed you will know about Jahannam. Thumma, again, It's as if you looked at Jahannam, you turn around and you looked back again. Like subhanallah, what is this? With all your open eyes and mind. Ayn al yaqeen. This time you're going to look at it. Sometimes you look at something, you doubt that you looked at it. Then you look back into it to gain certainty that, oh, it's really actually what I looked. If any one of you have lost their relatives, the first time you saw them deceased, you were a little bit shocked. You didn't believe it. Then you turn around and you look at it again and you say, it is true. Ayn al yaqeen. We will look at Jahannam with that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> since we were all distracted in our dunya and we were busy in this rat race, we forgot something throughout the whole process. We forgot the fact that Allah had bestowed bountiful blessings on each and every one of us. Each and every one of us, Allah has showered us with blessings. But we neglected those blessings and we forgot to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings. And then Allah says, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ On that day, you shall surely, verily be questioned and asked about all the blessings that were given to you. Naim is something that is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a bounty that Allah gives you. And if we do not cherish it, if we do not use it the way Allah wants us, then Allah can sometimes take it away from us. And sometimes Allah can leave us misusing this bounty so that He can punish us on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for those people whom Allah has given their bounties and they're misusing them, to wake them up in this dunya so that we do not have to to bear the punishment of Jahannam. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Now before you leave today, I have an activity for all of you, and I really like that every time I make sure that every time I give a khutbah, I leave behind some practical aspects for people to go back home, share it with your families, with your friends, so that we get a deeper understanding of what was talked about in the khutbah until our next khutbah. The exercise that I want you to do is when you leave from this place, go, the first thing I want you to do is go to a stationery shop. Go to a stationery shop and purchase a book, a notebook. Make sure it's a notebook that you like. Even if you have to spend 30, 40 rals on that notebook, that's fine because it's going to be something important that you're going to write in it. Now, what is it that we're going to write in it we're going to take an account every single night before we go to bed. Take an account of all the bounties that Allah gave you. 
So you're going to write down today five things that Allah gave you, bounties. So every single day something new is going to come up. Right? Maybe you got a raise in your salary or maybe you got a bonus. It's end of year. Most people are waiting for their bonuses. Something nice happened to you because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So take that and write it down. And keep a log of that for a minimum of two months. Then after two months, go back and start counting. I want you to start highlighting bounties that get repeated. So on a separate piece of paper, maybe you know you keep getting increases in your salary. Write that down. Maybe Allah keeps giving you new cars. Write that down. So eventually I want you to make a list of bounties that over the period of two months, Allah has given you repetitively, continuously, on a constant frequency. And you will be amazed to find out that each and every one of you no matter the status you have in this society, no matter the bank balance that you have in this society, each and every one of us, Allah is giving us a special bounty specific to you and nobody else. And you will figure it out within two to three months. And at that point, when you say the word Alhamdulillah, you would really mean it. Because you have identified a particular bounty or a blessing that Allah only gives you, or you, or you, and nobody else. And this activity, you can carry it on for years upon years and you will get compile a list of things that Allah gives you and only you and nobody else. And then you can truly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those bounties and really feel appreciated that despite all the billions of people in the world, Allah has chosen you for that one special bounty that only you deserve and no one else. Allahumma aslih lana deena lalladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana deena lalladhi fiha ma'ashuna wa aslih lana akhiratan lalladhi ilayha ma'aduna Allahumma la taj'al al-dunya akbar hammina ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم ارزقنا خشيتك في الغيب والشهادة اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا واختم لنا بخير واجعل واقب أمورنا إلى الخير يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أنت الملك لا إله إلا أنت أنت ربنا ونحن عبادك ظلمنا أنفسنا واعترفنا بذنوبنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا جميعها لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت واهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق واهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون